Hey guys, welcome back to the Migo YouTube channel. Going to look at grow lighting controllers today. Um, there are a few dedicated grow lighting controllers here and also a few of the big brand environment controllers. So, you know, you control all the aspects of your, um, your grow room or your grow tent. Uh, so temperature, humidity, fans, etc., and adding the lighting onto those circuits. Uh, just for basic sort of introduction, you've got your dimmer um, on your LED grow light. So generally you will have a knob on the LED driver or a little attachment to the driver and you can manually adjust the brightness up and down and even to off on the dimmer depending on the driver it's not always possible typically you'll have orj 11 connectors which is like a network cable that you would use for your computer and you connect that into the led driver and you usually have a switch on the led driver that switches from the local control or the dimmer knob to external from the uh, controller and then typically as well you can daisy chain multiple units together usually 15 or 20 units um, there will be a voltage drop across that signal which will reduce and therefore make it um, you can't add an infinite number of drivers but uh, usually one circuit um, will do enough for for most people and when is it necessary well you know typically uh, or usually you can just control the drivers on off um, with a timer and if you only have a few that's very handy just set up use a five dollar timer switch switch it on and off for the light cycle and then dimming adjustment isn't required that frequently so you're going to adjust your dimmer maybe going through different stages so you might have a dimmer adjustment for your uh, early veg stage so um, very young plants you know you're trying to hit about 300 power so you're probably adjusting to about 30 percent or thereabouts on the dimmer then up to veg stage you're probably getting to 50 60 percent from thereabouts and then up to 100% for flower. So you might only adjust the dimmer maybe three or four times in the grow cycle over, you know, it could be um, anywhere between 10 and, and 16 weeks. It doesn't have to be adjusted that frequently. Therefore, I don't think it's essential that you have uh, lighting and dimmer control. Other functions on it, like this sunset and sunrise, I don't think is useful. I don't think it makes any difference to the plants. Um, you know, as I've asked uh, Bruce Bugby, Dr. Bruce Bugby, eminent um, sort of scientist in this area, and uh, he says, you know, his analogy was plants don't need a cup of coffee in the morning to wake up. They just, you know, they'll photosynthesize um, at full rate within minutes of the lighting coming on. So not necessary. But if you have a lot of lights using your dimming circuit in a daisy chain, to switch everything on and off simultaneously and adjust simultaneously can be very useful and obviously um, uh, you reduce a lot of cabling there or uh, using a lot of um, timer circuits so it can be very useful in large facilities or large numbers of lights yeah, having said that um, if you've got an environment environment controller such as maybe this vivo sun or Trollmaster or ac infinity or whatever and you are um, setting up all of your um, devices, so your extract fan, maybe a heater, dehumidifier, AC unit, um, you know, you're measuring temperature and humidity, getting VPD right, uh, using the um, lighting output on those controllers, they are included uh, in each of those three models. Um, you just sometimes need an adapter, a little connector cable, which is pretty cheap. And um, you're getting to control your lights um, with the environment, with the um, as part of the overall control system that you're using. So why not use it? You probably should use it. Um, me personally, I'd be a timer manual adjust all day. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, make life less complicated. Um, some other features that they have, which can be very useful or considered useful. Uh, on, on the three environment controller ones, each of them has a temperature probe and each of them has a setting that if the temperature goes over a certain um, level that you can dim the lights or, or even switch them off in cases to help control those maximum peaks on, um, on temperature. So that could be very useful. So just going through them each then, 
Uh, Vivo Sun to start with, very cheap, $79.99. Nice controller, uh, very intuitive, easy to use. Um, has a zero to 10 volt adapter included. Um, so you just plug out an RJ connection. Now you may need to change over the cables um, or at least the wires. So they may not be one to one. Um, so you might have to do a little bit of wiring on that RJ connection uh, to, uh, to match up the terminals. Um, but other than that, it's got the zero to 10 volt adapter. It's got the te temperature sensor. It's got the app uh, Wi-Fi compatible. You don't have to use Wi-Fi. And uh, I found it really excellent and intuitive, uh, really simple to use. So I like that one. Um, I did look at um, customer feedback. So some of you guys um, uh, answered a post. Didn't see much wrong with the Vivo Sun other than sometimes the temperature probe seems to maybe have problems with interference. So that's the only, the only um, report that I got. The next one is the big, most complicated system here and most sophisticated one, the Trollmaster TCS1 Tentex controller and you need this little um, lighting control adapter with it. Again, you may need to change the, 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 um, the wiring, so you may not have to use a little adapter um, depending on what LED driver you're using. But um, yeah, that's excellent. It's much more expensive, but it's a much more a complete controller with much more uh, sophisticated um, capabilities in terms of integrating to lots of different devices. So if you're using it, it's a great one to use. Again, pretty intuitive. Um, did get again some negative complaints about um, uh, maybe the customer service on, on uh, when people were having issues. Um, wasn't at the best end, at the highest level. Uh, but other than that, no, nothing that I could see uh, negative. AC Infinity, very big in the market now. Again, very good value for money. This is the Pro controller that I tested with the, you give a type A and a type B adapter. Um, all of these, by the way, compatible with the Migo Array system. Uh, with this one, it's the type B, uh, just no wiring required, um, uh, no adapting. Um, and the adapter is pretty cheap too. Uh, temperature sensor is included. You get the whole system control uh, with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, very sophisticated system, very nice to use, uh, quite a lot of flexibility with it. I like it a lot. Then we're on to the dedicated lighting controllers. So Telus Growcast, uh, cool little device. Um, it does a few things that other ones don't do. So you can do it on a Bluetooth mesh, which means you can network these devices together. Uh, so you can be controlling multiple units through the same app. Um, app is uh, pretty intuitive, although not the easiest to use of all of them. Um, but you don't need Wi-Fi uh, to set it up. And um, you also have a system of um, compatibility. So you can go onto their website and check compatibility with the, the light that you're using. You have a lot of lights tested with it. And the unique um, proposition with that is that you get the cable, they give you the cables. So you get two connectors with it that suit most lights, uh, most LED drivers, and um, will connect directly without having to fiddle with wiring. And um, it also, ha they have tested a lot of fixtures with their controller um, in um, you know, a tent environment and they can display the average PPFD in your area as you adjust the dimming, which is pretty cool. The only device that does that. Then we have the Growflux. This is a uh, device aimed at the commercial and um, much more expensive than any of the others. Um, now it has some features and functions that um, would be useful for a commercial grower, not so useful for the home grower, um, but you do, get, um, you do get the app and the Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Um, temperature sensor not included. That's um, it's uh, a big uh, missing one as far as I'm concerned from um, from that controller system. But as I said, if you're in the commercial end, that may be the one for you. It gives all these sort of readouts on your um, electricity consumption, and you can you can um, co-control multiple different sites and all that stuff. So it could be useful. So as I said, may not be for everybody, but if you have your uh, environment controller um, or you're looking at get one hopefully this is of use to you and helps you make that decision 
Looking forward to hear you below. If you have any of these controllers, I'm looking forward to hear from you below what you think of them. Uh, and if you've had any issues, um, please let us know. And uh, let everybody else know too. Take care.